Life is like a mountain railway with an engineer that's brave. You must make the run successful from the cradle to the grave. Watch the curves, the hills and tunnels never falter, never fail. Just keep your hand upon the throttle and your eye upon the rail. Blessed Savior, thou will guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us in thy praise. Just like a mountain railway with an engineer that's brave. You must make the run successful from the cradle to the grave. Watch the curves, the hills and tunnels, never fall. Savior, thou will guide us till we reach that distant shore where the angels wait to join us in thy praise forevermore. Good afternoon. We gather here today to show the Kuntz family our love, understanding, and support as we mourn the passing of Terry, a truly wonderful, caring, and dedicated son, brother, uncle, and friend who is loved by all. It is important to remember that today is our opportunity to celebrate Terry's life and the inspiration that he was for so many of us. The family appreciates you coming here today to share in this celebration. Whether you're here physically or here by live stream, your love and support is appreciated. 
Life is quite different now than it was a year ago. And given the reality of life today, we are restricted in what we can do to help families during this difficult time. However, what is important is that today is occurring and your family under these difficult times choose to come together to celebrate and remember the life of Terry. I hope that today will provide you with some much needed comfort and relief. Let us offer our prayers as we prepare to celebrate Terry's life and all that he meant to us. Please stand. With longing for our heavenly homeland, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I'd like to call upon Terry's brother, Randy, to share the gospel reading with us today. Randy? A time for everything. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Randy. I think there's no question that if Terence was here, he'd be telling us that it is a time to laugh and it's a time to heal. And when I listen to all the, the people talk about Randy, or about uh, Terry, I should say, laughter was a big part of his life. So again, thank you, Randy. Terry was an excellent guitarist who loved to share his music with others. One of his favorite songs was Songbird by Fleetwood Mac. While the song is playing, the family has asked Terry's nieces to come up and place a flower by the urn as a symbol of the love all the family had for their Uncle Terry. During this song, please allow yourself to think of all the wonderful memories and times you spent with Terry and know that he is playing his guitar and sharing his love of music with his mom and dad in heaven. To you, I 
And now I'd like to invite Terry's sister-in-law, Karen, to share a letter from Claudia. Karen? Terry was dressed as a gorilla the night we met in 1983. It was a Halloween party at the Medicine Hat Lodge, I believe. I was in a traveling country band called the Tequila Mockingbirds. We were from California, hired for that party, and then for two weeks at the Redcliffe Hotel Bar. Terry didn't take off his costume head that night, but I saw a lot of happy gorilla running all over the place. And that gorilla sure was a great dancer. The next day, he ran into me at the local music store. He introduced himself, and those two next weeks were just, just as much fun thanks to him. I never traveled much in my life, and to me, his prairie was heaven on earth. I was lucky to have made such a kind and generous friend to show me its wonders. I visited Terry on and off for some years, taking the Greyhound bus from Los Angeles, and just want to list some of the things that he brought into my life. Kindness. I know that I have never met a kinder, kinder hearted person in my life. He came to LA once and on a very, very busy street, saw that someone was having car trouble and said, let's pull over and help that guy. That was Terry. He showed me the beauty of the prairie. We took sunset hikes along the cliffs and the river, each with our Walkmans and the headphones on. I remember once we switched because I wanted to see what he was listening to. It was Johnny Horton, north to Alaska. Just cracked me up. He had some pretty unlikely taste for a young 21-year-old. He once drove me on a bumpy back road while I hung on to the hood of the truck, better than any amusement park ride ever. He took me on my one and only canoe ride. He was a great dancer, a natural. I'd stand on stage each night in Ratcliffe with the band and marvel at, his mo at him moving his dance partner so effortlessly across the floor. Seemed like he was just flying a foot above the dance floor. On one visit, I got to help with the yearly sausage making, a family tradition that made me feel like part of the family. It cracked his mom up to see this city girl roll up her sleeves and help with the butchering and sausage making. He loved his family tremendously and deeply. And you could tell how much he truly enjoyed their company. It was deep down love. And he taught me how to cheat at Monopoly, but I'm not telling that secret. Ask Stan. I think Terry was a very old soul. I used to think maybe we'd been related in some other lifetime. Just a tremendous connection with him and a unique love I hadn't experienced before or since. An exquisite soul. I miss you, Terry, and keep you in my heart. Keep playing the guitar in heaven until we meet again. I'll leave a candle burning for you, my sweet friend.
Thank you, Karen. At this time, I'd like to invite Terry's sister, Corey, to come up and share some wonderful memories of her brother. We were talking about Terry last night. I totally forgot about the cheating at Monopoly. <laughs> oh my God, I did that all the time. <laughs> uh, so yeah, being the only girl growing up with three brothers, I had my share of challenges, um, being left behind, being teased, rough housing. But the other side to this was that I was so lucky to have three older brothers who, uh, I thought I'd make it way better than this, <laughs> we were just starting. Um, who protected me and guided me, watched out for me and loved me. I always felt safe and sheltered as a kid and I wanna thank all my brothers for that. But to my brother, Terry. Uh, Terry had a huge heart. It's been talked about a lot. He was fiery, he was a free spirit. He never ever wanted to be tied down or too committed to anything. You know, he liked his freedom um, and doing things his own way, right? But if you were in his heart, you knew that, and he was your friend for life. And uh, Jay and I were remembering we really got to know Terry best when he moved up to Calgary. And we spent quite a bit of time with him. He was a part of our family. Uh, he was always willing to help out, contribute, support. Anything we asked, he would help if he could. Uh, we found out sometimes he had ulterior motives. He would always like to pick up our Doberman when she was a puppy and take her for walks. And we'd be like, oh, thank you. It's so helpful because we're so busy we're working. And only to find out later, like she was a chick magnet for him. <laughs> and he, he liked to meet girls. He always met girls when he took our little Doberman for a walk. And he's like, every time I take her, I meet a girl. They come up and they want to know about my dog. And so he'd pick her up like three, four times a week, <laughs> take her for walks. Only Terry, right? Um, he was a hard worker, Terry was, and it was hard on him when he was between jobs. I think it was important for Terry to feel useful and feel like he was contributing to something. He hated just sitting at home. Um, he always had to be doing something, and I think it was really challenging for him the last few years to not be working and not be active as he wasn't feeling well. I think that ate at his soul a little bit. Uh, there's a couple of funny stories about Terry. There's quite a few, but the one, you know, we were remembering, God, he, he loved to scare people. Anybody remember being scared by Terry? <laughs> Nothing made him happier than just to make someone jump out of their skin. And he loved getting reactions, like to make you laugh and scare you, like the best. That would make his day. Um, when he was in Calgary and we were renovating our place and we actually lived with him for a few months and after after living with him and being scared by him over and over and over again like daily uh, Jay decided one day to get even with him and uh, give him a taste of his own medicine and one day Jay came around the corner and Terry was at the kitchen sink and he scared him so bad that Terry literally he jumped three feet straight up in the air and landed flat on his ass <laughs> on the floor. And he was actually shaking, like literally shaking. We, we were actually worried about him. <laughs> we had to get him breathing again. And we were so pleased that we got him back for that. He never did scare us again after that. That was done. Um, and I don't know how many of you remember the surprise birthday party, 40th birthday party we threw for Terry up in Calgary. It was a big surprise at our place. And of course, he walked in the door and everyone yelled, surprise! and he once again jumped about three feet he literally propelled back like back into our hallway like six seven feet he actually flew up in the air he was so he just got scared and um, yeah he loved to scare you but did not like being on the receiving end of that uh, that party that 40th birthday party spoke I think to the love around Terry he had friends and family there from all over. People came from Edmonton, Saskatchewan. Uh, Claudia, even, she was a part of it. They had a phone call or I can't remember video, something like that. Uh, it was a beautiful night. And, you know, he thanked us for that night for years after. It just meant a lot to him. 
And he was really tickled that he was celebrated in such a way. So that's a, a night I'll always remember. Um, and it's been mentioned lots how musical he was. And I remember being really proud of him playing in that band in his um, neighborhood pub in Calgary. We went to listen to him one night, cheer him on. But you know, he, he didn't like being the center of attention though. Like I think he loved playing his music, but he didn't like that he was up on a stage and all the eyes were on him. That wasn't really his jam. He, he, he loved to play in little like sing-alongs and fires and stuff like that, but he had a lot of talent. I think he, he had a lot of talent there. And, but he just didn't like everyone looking at him. And there's a side to me, though, that really loves country folk music, like Chris Christopherson, Johnny Cash, Johnny Horton <laughs> talked about here, Hank Williams, Merle Haggard, Willie Nelson. It's large part thanks to when I would hear, I think, specifically Stan and Terry playing uh, the banjo and guitar and playing that music growing up. And it's always, I just have always had an affinity for it. People make fun of me that I still listen to Chris Christopherson and all that that stuff, but it reminds me of home and it reminds me of, of my brothers and my family. Um, what else about Terry? He was, uh, he was not only did he do weld for a living, he was a talented welder and we still have furniture in our home that he actually made for us. A beautiful metal table, a weight stand, a really long bench, um, stair railings in our last home. Uh, Terry did all of that. He was, he was really, really talented at it and so I feel like I have a part of him with me in my home. And my only regret um, standing here today is that I didn't, I don't, didn't really know what was going on for Terry after mom sold the house and we didn't come to Medicine Hat often to visit. And I wish I would have reached out more, just checked in more than I did to say hello and just call more often because I know he was on his own. But I will choose to instead just carry his smile and his laugh and his twinkly eyes in my heart. And I'll remember the, the good, the fun, the joy, the spark that Terry had. I'll remember our times together in Calgary. We had a lot of fun. Uh, we really missed him when he moved back to Medicine Hat. I know he knows I loved him and I know he loved me. He always told me whenever we spoke. At the end of every call or text, I always got an I love you sister. So. Yeah. Rest in peace, Terry, and know that um, you have a very special place in my heart. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Corey, for such a beautiful tribute to your brother. I'd like to invite Karen up again to read a letter sent from Patty. I met Terry in Calgary of 2004 at a pub called Partners. We sat and talked. He asked me for my phone number. I was stubborn, but I gave in. He called the next day and I was shocked. Then we were together. We moved to the Crow's Nest Pass, a small town called Coleman. Then eventually after eight months, we moved back to Medicine Hat. Throughout the years, we went camping. He took me on his motorbike and snowmobiling. Together we watched the CFL, being Stamp Stampeder fans, and when there was a touch out, touchdown, I did the patty dance, which would make him smile. He was a good fisherman. He had won $2,500 in a trophy he was so proud of. He loved playing his guitar, and I will miss his singing voice most of all. Terry would go out back, sit on the deck with his coffee, and he loved watching the birds. Terry also told jokes that made me laugh. Terry is the love of my life. And I'm very grateful for everything Terry did for me. Thank you, Patty. And thank you, Karen. At this time, I'd like to call upon Stan to come up and share the life story and all the wonderful memories of his brother, Terry.
First, I want to thank uh, everyone who sent their condolences and for all of you who may be watching through the live stream, uh, thank you for sharing this space with us today. Terry, thank you for the gift of your laughter. How you could make people laugh and bring them to their knees with your incredible wit was nothing short of amazing. And for that, Terry, we hold pure joy in our hearts. Thank you for the love you showed to my daughters, Maria and Missy. You never missed a birthday, graduation, or Christmas. Without, you never let an occasion pass without acknowledging them. They knew your love, Terry, and they loved you so much as well. That love was carried on to Caden, Ava, and Rhea. Your support and encouragement you showed Caden for his storytelling will never be forgotten. Your hugs and the twinkle in your eye for Ava and Rhea. Their nickname surpasses you, Gut, Great Uncle Terry. This name was a suiting to you and for you, as my name is Grumps. <laughs> Tyler and Cole, my son-in-laws, Grew to know the legend of Terry, and they too hold a special place for you. And Karen, Terry, your friendship and love for each other was so quiet and special and was held a lifetime. With Karen having known you before her and I even met, even through the toughest of times, visiting the doctors and you both hearing all the news that they had to give you. You were still so gracious and on one occasion kissed her on the cheek and called her your angel. Now, Terry, you are her angel watching from above. Terry, as my brother and best friend, what can I say? Where do I start? As children and then as grown men. You are my dearest, closest companion. You are my younger brother, my best friend, my partner in crime. And for a time, even though I was always your boss, that's an older brother's right. You became my boss through work. Our career choices took us down the same path, pathway, which only allowed us even more time together. And Missy being our hired hand can attest to the craziest of times even while we worked. Our crazy stories and jokes would keep us in tears and such hard laughter we would need to leave the room to get away from each other just to regain our composure. I remember on one occasion while driving down the road, we started on one of our rants and you had to pull off the highway just to keep us safe. <laughs> Camping, fishing, motorcycles, we did everything together. You bought your motorcycle so you could ride with me. I bought you a sled so you would have to ride with me. We bought quads so we could ride together. We bought our first camping trailer together so we could camp. Our first ice fishing hut we bought together. And that first ice fishing trip landed us with more fish and wildlife tickets than I want to admit to. <laughs> wow. Hey, we did everything together because of our friendship or we were just too broke or scared to do it on our own. We went to Spain together to be with Randy, and I know Karen was afraid of the stories she would later hear. We went to Texas together, even though it was for work, and again, partners in crime. In Texas, our company felt we should share a bed to save them a buck. As brothers, they thought this would be fine. 
But that's where we drew the line. <laughs> Terry got the cot and I got the bed. <laughs> I had a dog. You walked him. And you had a dog who sometimes loved me more than you loved him. <laughs> you bought a guitar and I bought a banjo. You became a professional mus musician and while well, I'm still playing the same song. And Terry, how you would always win at whatever game the family would play, especially at Christmas, and the famous game of Monopoly. I know you stashed money in every room to retrieve throughout the game to keep you number one. And Terry, you are our number one. Your music and your laughter will hold us all together as we learn to journey on without you. I'm going to read a poem, Author Unknown. We can shed tears that he's gone, or we can smile because he lived. We can close our eyes and pray that he'll come back, or we can open our eyes and see all that he left. Our hearts can be empty because we can't see them, or we can be full of the love he shared. We can turn our backs on tomorrow because of yesterday, or we can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. We can remember him only that he is gone, or we can cherish his memory and let it live on. We can cry and close our minds be empty and turn our backs. Or we can smile, open our eyes, love, and journey on. I think the last line sums up how we as a family need to move forward and try to make it through the rest of our lives without them. Goodbye, brother, uncle, and a friend. Thank you, Stan. Your family is amazing. To Uncle Terry, his nieces and nephews meant everything to him. And knowing that they would continue to prosper in their lives was very important. I think if Terry could leave one final thought or wish to Missy, Maria, Wyatt, Jackson, Caden, Ava, Rhea, and Jude, I think this is what he would say. My wish for you is simple. Have the very best life imaginable. Live life like you never grow old. Laugh, giggle, and cry if you must, laughing being really important. Play as hard as you work. Always make time for the people and things that you adore, especially your family. When you sleep, I hope you have the best dreams that will wake you up with a smile on your face and know that you will always be loved and stay forever young. It was so wonderful sharing all these memories of Terry with Stan, Karen, Randy, and I know, I know Corey, you had a lot to do with this in communicating the stories. It's such an honor for me to be a part of it. I just felt so fortunate to be able to listen to all these wonderful stories and to listen about a person who had a gift, and his gift was being able to make people feel good, making people feel that their problems weren't that big, and being able to make us laugh. That is such a powerful, powerful gift. His gift of humor. He was so loving, so kind, so caring, so generous to all of his family. A person who was so proud of his nieces and nephews and had the ability to not only inspire them, but encourage them to continue striving for whatever dreams they had. He was also the kind of uncle that always would make sure that his nieces and nephews 
were his number one priority. He didn't need to do that, but that was important to him. A person who would drop anything he was doing to help a family member or a friend. I don't think that Terry would ever want you to worry about him. And I love what Stan said. I don't think he would. He, want, he would want all of you to love and support each other. And after spending time with this family, there's no doubt in my mind that isn't going to be a problem. I know you're going to do that. Listening just to how much you love and care for your brother is so wonderful. Terry really impacted a lot of people. And just seeing how much your family and friends admired him is a true testament to what a wonderful person he was. I'd like to read a poem that I really feel talks about the person your brother was, or your uncle, and why he was so loved. You never looked for praises, and you were never one to boast. You were always there for those you love the most. You worked so hard, I understood, that life was actually pretty good. I believe in you, and I will follow you, your path, and when things go wrong, I'll look back and laugh. I hope you can hear us so we can let you know that you were and will forever be our superhero. So yes, today I am full of sorrow, but I'll smile a little more with each tomorrow. So please go be at rest and know to us you're always the best. We love you so much and we'll miss you every day. Please stand. Heavenly Father, give us a certainty that beyond death there is life, where broken things are mended and lost things are found, where there is rest for the weary and joy for the sad, where all that we have loved and willed of good exists, and where we will again meet our loved ones. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I just can't stop thinking about what an impacting person Terry was. And that gift he had to allow us and make us laugh is such a wonderful memory I'm going to have. Many people, especially Terry's family and friends, will sadly miss him. But Terry will never be gone if you keep his memory in your hearts and in your minds. So think of Terry, talk about him, Think of some of his jokes and laugh about them. And fondly remember those times that he touched your hearts in some way. Remember to keep those stories alive and share them whenever you have a chance. I want to thank you for showing all of us just how important it is to always be there for your family and friends. Thank you for joining the family and allowing us to celebrate the life of Terry, a loving son, brother, and uncle. As we come to a close in this celebration, I would ask that you say your goodbyes and prayers for Terry as we play the final song, Amazing Grace, that the family has selected and that I know Terry loved to listen to. Thank you again for being a big part of this wonderful celebration for Terry Kuntz, brother and uncle. God bless. <laughs>